Just stand and praise the Lord this morning. This is a wonderful day the Lord has made. We want to rejoice and be glad in it. What a mighty God we serve. Come on. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, Jesus is the God we serve. Oh, Jesus is the God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Jesus is the God we serve. Oh, what a righteous God we serve. What a righteous God we serve. Angels bow before you, Lord. Heaven and earth adore you. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before you. Heaven and earth adore you. What a mighty God we serve. Well, we serve a mighty God. A mighty God we serve. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty, mighty good God. Hey, we serve an almighty God. Yes, we do. We serve an almighty God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We serve a mighty God. Oh, a mighty God. Well, he's a righteous God. Oh, serve a mighty, mighty good God. Well, he's my healer. He's my savior, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Oh, what a mighty God. Oh, a mighty, mighty good God. Hallelujah. A mighty, mighty good God. Oh, a mighty, mighty good God. Well, angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God. Jesus is the God, Jesus is the God. What a righteous God, what a righteous God, what a holy God, holy, 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 holy God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, we serve, oh, and we bless his name this morning, come on and clap your hands, Open your mouth. Tell the Lord, thank you. You've been good. We honor you today. We bless your holy name. Come on, hallelujah. Oh, bless his holy name. Amen. And as we're just clapping our hands, I've heard spiritually that just baffles the devil. He hates the way it sounds. And if you just want to mess up his hearing, hallelujah, just clap your hands. The Bible says, oh, clap your hands, all ye people. And we bless his holy name, for God is good and his mercy endures forever. And we praise God today for what? A mighty God. And we bless his holy name. And we praise God as we're going to believe God, trust God. Know that he's able to deliver us. Know that he's able to heal us. Bring us out. Break every curse, every habit, addiction, whatever you need this morning. We want to go to the throne of God. We want to believe God. Know that he's able. 
I say to you, have faith in God as we pray over you this morning. Elder Holt, our assistant pastor, will be breathing the prayer on this service today. Open up your hearts and your mind. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your holy name. Oh, we thank Son of you, God, Jesus. Please. Thank you this morning. Yes, Lord. First of all, we thank you for waking us up. Yes. Blessing us to see another day. And certainly this is the day that you have made, and we're going to rejoice. Rejoice. And enjoy it. We ask that you would move and move by your spirit, oh God. Move by your Holy Ghost power. Stretch out your mighty hands. Heal the land, oh thank God. You, Jesus. Trouble on every side. Trouble, oh God. But we know you that you're us. able. You help us. That you can do all things and that nothing is too hard for you. We know that you can speak the word and the word only and it shall be done. Have your way, oh God. Move and move in a mighty way. Thank you for stretching out the streets and the freeways, airways on this morning. Another day that you blessed us to come together. We want to give you the glory, the honor, and we want to give you all the praise. It is done in your son Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. We praise the Lord and we thank God. Well, we're going to have our scripture reading by John Trey this morning. Let's praise God as he comes and reads the scripture for today. Amen. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I'll be reading from Psalms. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretches out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. The blessed, blessed are the hearers and the doers of the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I just hear a little bit of that. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. We praise the Lord this morning. We're so glad for our Facebook viewers, families, and friends watching us today. So glad you're with our service. God has done mighty, mighty things, whereof we are glad. And as we're greeting you, you need to know you're with the Holy Way Church in case somebody's watching that's just coming in. Maybe you were surfing and just looking, trying to find something. I ask that you would stay with us this morning because we're the Holy Way Church of God in Christ. Bishop Nowden is our pastor, the angel of this house. I'm your co-pastor, Cecilia. You're with a church that believes in simple gospel, simple, and it's pure with purpose. And we just believe in going forward in Jesus' name with what? With victory. And so today, as I greet you, I've just had the thought on the word thanks. We can never get enough of that. But oh, give thanks unto the Lord for we what? Serve a great God today. He's a global God. He's a sovereign God. 
The Lord has done great things, and you need to understand that every good and perfect gift comes from who? The Father. If the enemy's telling you anything else, and if it's bad and really messed up, you better know it has everything to do with the enemy. But the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. We thank him today for what? He has a strong arm, a strong hand, and he has a mighty stretched out arm. He's just stretching out all over the world. Amen. Whether we realize or not, with all that's going over the, uh, on in Ukraine, God, when you look at it, you can see him in places, in places, in places. God is everywhere, and he's still working. Oh, we thank him today. Why? Because he redeems us. From who? From our enemies. Anybody got some enemies today? I'm sure everybody could raise their hand. Any moment, any time is appropriate to give thanks. We don't always understand it, but the Bible told us. I didn't say it. The Bible said in everything, let us give thanks. For what? This is the will of God through his son for us to exercise this put it on your exercise list to give thanks open your mouth and praise him as I conclude Colossians 4 and 2 and another translation says devote yourself to prayer being watchful and thankful Amen. I say to you, pass it on. Let's praise God in here. Let's clap our hands and thank God for what he's doing. Let's allow him to get in the moment. And I just want to sing a little bit of he keeps doing great things for me. I want to say also, as I prepare to sing this song, because the next voice you will hear is our bishop. This is our um, pastor and wife. It would have been our pastor and wife anniversary. Yes, today. <laughs> and uh, we had some special circumstances around, and we had um, moved it. Of course, when Bishop comes, he can explain it a little bit more. I'll let him clean up what I'm saying. But we're just praising God that here we are in another year, another, another time that we can say, God, you have done it. You've done it. And so... I just want to say he keeps doing great things because you know what? It could be something different going on, but God keeps doing great things. We're standing, we're breathing, we're moving in him. Oh, he keeps doing great things for me. Oh, oh, oh he keeps on, on doing great things for me. Oh, 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 he keeps on doing great things for me. Yes, he does. He keeps on, on doing great things for me. And if I had 10,000 hands, oh, I would lift them up, oh, and praise them with every one of them. And oh, oh, oh if I had 10,000 tongues, oh, I would sing and praise him, praise him with every one, because he knows. So much better than anyone I know. He takes better care of me, better care of me than anyone I know. Oh, he keeps on doing great things for me. Yes, he does. He keeps on doing great things things for me and God has smiled on me he's been good to me God has smiled on me he's been good to me oh he is the 
the source of my joy. He fills me with his love. And he guides me every day. Yes, yes, he does. He's my all in all because he knows me better, so much better than anyone I know. Oh, he takes better care of me, better care of me than anyone I know. Oh, he keeps on, keeps right on, he keeps on. Oh, 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 he keeps on the stand. Boy, oh, he keeps on the stand, y'all. He keeps on. Right on, right on. Let's stand, y'all. Keeps on. Blessing me. Keeps on holding me. And walking with me. Keeps talking with me. Keeps guiding me. Keeps on. certainly give you praise on this morning. Oh, Father, we thank you for all of your grace and mercy that bestowed upon each of us. We lift you up and we magnify your holy name. Thank you for the gift of your son, amen, that came and paid the ultimate price that we can live. And the devil said it was all over. You said live. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise and all of the glory. And we bless the people of the Lord. Have your way again. As you have so often had your way in our life. We pray now that you do it again. In the name of Jesus, speak a word word of salvation, speak a word of deliverance, a word of healing, a word, Lord Jesus, that will bring peace, and we give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name, thank God, amen, you may be seated, may the Lord bless you, and may God certainly keep you, amen, God has been good us, amen, and uh, we are so thankful for his blessing. And, uh, we was in the second Saturday meeting yesterday in San Diego, and uh, I'm praying that God will uh, give us some people here to become more involved in the work that I do at but it was a wonderful meeting. We had a, a tremendous time. And, amen. And letting people know where we were going and the direction that we were going in the Word. And uh, we're so thankful that God has given us favor in that area. Thank God for each of you from Holy Way here. We appreciate you and give you praise and 
amen, for your faithfulness. And at a time that I, I said, you know, sometimes we have to just wait and let God uh, move. He can't, he don't move when we say move. You know, God is not a checkerboard. The checkerboard, you move when you say move. You know, you just move your checker, you know. But God move at his time. And I believe that we at the time that God is moving and healing the land. We've been waiting for us to bring us out of this this uh, disease that we have experienced. And I, I believe that he's healing the land. People people doing what they want to do and go where they want to go. You know? Now you got those that going they're going to carry this pandemic on for another five or ten years. And even though it, the land be clean and the air be clean, they still going to hold on to it on Sunday. Now, Monday through Saturday, they won't, they won't be worrying about the pandemic. They're going to be going to ball games and hula games and, and parties. I, I seen, I never been on Facebook until the pandemic came, you know, looking at stuff. I didn't even understand what it was, but since the pandemic, I, you'll see, sometimes you see the preaching, but you see, you see people on there that church folk partying and, and they be dancing and, you know, and they look over the, on, the, on the phone and you see the, and the beer cans and the liquor bottle, they just be having a good time, but the mask don't be on. And then on Sunday, they say, you can't come to church because of the pandemic. So some people are going to use that not to come to church. And wait another couple of years, they're going to be still going on. We, we, we done left the pandemic and went into something else. They're still going to be holding on to it for the same thing. But I believe that God is healing the land. Amen. Children of Israel stayed out of church for 40 years. Amen, going around and around in the wilderness, trying to get it together, but they never was able to get it together until they acknowledged the Lord, and then God told them, amen, now turn, amen, and go and possess the land that belonged to you. How many want what God has for you? My wife was saying earlier, and I'm just kind of talking a little bit here today. My wife was saying earlier that ordinarily this would have been our uh, pastor wife anniversary that we celebrated. We've been doing this for, since our pastor time. This would have been the day that we celebrate other churches would come and celebrate with us. So we, we postponed that. We didn't ask you to giving the money for the anniversary or raise anything or, or do anything. You know, we didn't even ask for a card, you know, or, or anything because what we wanted to do is to give you an opportunity to, to focus upon the elevation dinner. And, uh, we are celebrating the anniversary in the elevation all at the same time. That will be in June the 11th. And we encouraging you, hold away members, to, amen, participate in that. We've been talking about it now for about a couple months or so. And uh, if you ain't did it by now, and then you're going to wait about the last week or two, it probably will be sold out, and then we have to cut it off. And, 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 and then and it will be out of my hand. You can't look at me because <laughs> the committee is putting that together, you know what I mean? So. That's why we started letting you know earlier so you can uh, participate in that and be a part of that. And we thank you, uh, you that have participated, you that plan, have been making plans to be there. But that will be the elevation celebration and also the our anniversary time that we'll celebrate for the many years that we've been here as pastor and wife. Amen. That's all, I'm like you guys, that's all I'm going to say about that. All right. Uh, thank you, each of you. Thank you, good for. Thank you for the elders, Ella Hope, Ella Richardson. God bless you, and Ella Reese. 
Amen. All you remember that my little preacher, uh, Minister Vermeer, all the preachers. Amen. Give the preachers a hand, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Chop. bless you on today. God is good, isn't he? Yeah. Amen. God is good. Amen. Um, so many of you that um, God had promised, and I hear people tell me in it many times, God said it and I believe it and he promised me. You ever heard that type of, God promised me, but they never receive it. They're just trying to go to their, their grave talking about what he promised me. You know, God said it, God promised it. And, and really, if God said it, I believe it will come to pass. Yes, sir. And, 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 and many times I find out in my, my walk with the Lord and my study, I find out that you really is on track. God did tell you. He did tell you. But the reason they haven't come in the past is because of your attitude. Your attitude can hinder your, uh, your promises. Are y'all with me on that? I, I, there, there's, um, there's what you call, as I study the word of the Lord, there's many promises of God. Now, I want you to hear this. Some of them is what you call conditional. Remember that, conditional promises. And then the other is unconditional promises. A conditional promise is that <coughs> if you do this, then I will do this. That means that I will I will carry out my part of the promise or the bargain depending on if you do. And then there's other promise that God promised us that he said I will do it and it really has nothing to do with you. It's really, you know, whether you do this or whether you do that or whether you, you ain't got to do nothing. God just said, I'm going to do it because I'm God and I decided to do it. That is the difference between conditional promises and unconditional promises. <coughs> There's some promises that you waiting on and the reason they have them came to pass, and the reason you have not been able to receive them is because they are conditional promise. God is waiting for you to do your part. Yeah. Kind of like, like going to a job. You, you go to work and you work on a job and then you get paid. But what you want to do, you want that uh, unconditional promise. You just go in there and get paid and it doesn't matter whether you work or not. God said, I'm going to give you uh, hundred dollars a day and it doesn't matter whether you show up or whether you work or not you just get your hundred dollars a day a lot of us like those type of promises because we want to get it without doing anything conditional promise is when you finish the job after you do your work then you'll get paid amen let, let me let me read a word here Y'all, y'all, excuse me if I don't get excited today, okay? I just, just, just talk to you, okay? Amen. In, in, Rome, in, in the book of Numbers, in the book of Numbers, the 14th chapter, I'm going to start reading here, 14th chapter, 
go into verse 1. It says, uh, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night, and all the children of Israel mumbled, mumbled. I don't know what the word mumbling means. <coughs> they mumbled against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation, all of them said unto them, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore has the Lord brought us I want you to remember verse 3. Wherefore has the Lord brought us into this land, fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better, were it not better for us to return into Egypt? Number 4. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron, and they fell on their face before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of, of Israel. And Joshua and the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunas, uh, which was of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land, the land, which we pass through to search it, is an exceedingly good land. Number eight, if the Lord delight in us, then we should bring, if the Lord delight in us, if the Lord delight in us, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us. A land which float with milk and honey. Number nine, I think it'll be the last verse I read. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are uh, breed of us. Their defense is depart from them. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Amen. I read that because I wanted to give you some little insight of what had taken place in the text here is that God had promised Israel to bring them out of the land of Egypt after being down there for 400 years in, in uh, slavery under the, the taskmaster of Pharaoh and they prayed and prayed. You know, you all know how y'all pray when you get in trouble. And, and here God done delivered them, and the only way to receive, the only way to receive what God had promised them. And they at the bank of receiving what God had promised them. They done went through the wilderness, and they read at the brink where they can go over and look and see the land. That, that, they done got there, they, they, you know. You ever got there and then you let the enemy take it away from you? Ugh. They done got there and now because they are facing some difficult times and and, and this verse here uh, uh, he said that the ninth verse said the land of which they are breed, the breed of us these people that you're afraid of, they are a breed of us. They come from our ancestors, uh, uh, Esau, you know, uh, uh, descendants. Uh, these are the same. They are us fighting against each other. You go back to generation, you'll find out they, uh, they, they, they come from the same the father and, and ancestor. That they begin to grow. They begin to depart and become intimate to each other. So what God has did has brought them out of Egypt, delivered them. Now, that, you have to remember, they prayed. They prayed when they was in Egypt and asked God to deliver them. They the one went and God asked God to deliver them. 
But now God can deliver them. And you, I read the text to you. Look at it. Now God can deliver them. And they, they, and they, they done came all the way to the land that God has promised them. And now they are saying, why don't we choose us a captain to go back where we came from? God ever deliver you out of something then when you get a little depressed, you want to go back? He didn't deliver you from being an alcoholic, then you get depressed. You talking about, I sure wish I had a shot of Jack Daniel. <laughs> now, when you were drinking Jack Daniel every day, you wasn't happy then. You was broke. You were getting drunk driving tickets. You were being thrown into the tank. You were what else? You was you was uh, in trouble, yeah. depressed, uh, up press and depressed and all kind of press. Am I right about? It? Yeah. And then you went to God and your wife getting spending all the money at the at the liquor store. And God deliver you and, and bless you. Now you're doing good. And now you run into some of those difficult problems. And the first thing you talk about, I sure feel like getting me a drink. It didn't help you then. Why would it help you now? Oh, that, that, that's not even in my paper, my notes. I mean. Amen. People of God, they at the they at the bank of receiving what God has promised them. And the only thing, now you got to listen to this, the only thing that, that, that I'm looking at here, the only thing that will keep them from what God has promised them, the only thing that, that will keep them from, what, from, from the very land that God has promised them were two things. Number one was rebellion. Say rebellious for me. Rebellious. How many know what rebellious is? Yeah. A lot of people, they doing it, but they don't even know what it is, but it's rebellious. Right. Rebellious. They determined, they determined, they determined to choose them a leader. They didn't say that I'm going to trust God to lead me. That's in the text here. Well, let, me, uh, let me find out what verse that is. They determined uh, to choose them, say, let's choose us a leader. What verse was that I read that at? The leader to take us back. Anybody see that verse? And they said to one another, let us make a captain. Matter of fact, we're going to get some bars on his shoulder. But you can have some authority. Let us make us a captain, a leader. And let us return that he can take us back to Egypt. What are you saying, preacher? Let us find somebody to take us back in the same mess that you're going to deliver us out of. Don't that sound like somebody that you familiar with? Only because they run into some difficult time. God never said that He's going to promise you anything, and He's not going to you're not going to have to go through some difficult time. He never said that. He promised you a car. He never said it won't get a flat. He 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 promised he promised you a husband or a wife. He never said that they're going to be pleased all the time. They never said you're going to cook for you every day neither. They never said that everything's just going to be smooth. He just said, I'm going to give it to you. It's up to you. To, now, you're going to have to know how to manage that and make it work. You know what I mean? So God promised in the land, but he didn't say that. In the meantime, while you are traveling, that you will encounter some opposition. He never said that you would not encounter opposition. And when they encounter opposition, what they said, I know what God promised, and I know that God can deliver us, but now, because of what we are facing, let's go back into the same stuff that God delivers out of. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let me just share this with you. Going back into the same stuff that God delivers you out of does not make it better. 
It does not make it better. Matter of fact, it gets worse when you return it back. Amen. And it said, said that rebellion, they determined to choose a leader. That's being rebellious. The devil want to take you back where God had brought you out of. And that's the first thing that the enemy will do will get you to rebel against the will of God. Number two is fear. How many know what fear is? Anybody ever been afraid? Now don't be like that, man. I ain't afraid of nothing. I ain't afraid of nothing. I'm, I'm bad. Fear. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, affection of the mind. Fear affects the mind. Have you to think a certain way. And it usually comes when one face danger, uh, one face the uncertainty, or one face something that he has no, no control of himself, then the fear comes in in the mind. And, and what they did, they saw uh, God done delivered them. Just think about this for a moment. God done delivered them out of Egypt. They prayed, and, and before God brought them out of Egypt, they experienced all of these Miracle God worked in Egypt. He worked the, 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 the Nile turning into blood and the, what was it, the, 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 the bars and what was the, the darkness doing, doing the midst of daylight, darkness come up on all of the land and uh, uh, the flies came. They, they don't see the frogs, thank you, the frogs and, the, and they don't see all of these miracles. The, 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 the other one. And then at the end, the, 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 uh, the blood put on the doorpost and the firstborn. And, but they done seen all of this. They done seen God work in time past. They done seen the miracles of God. It, it's not that they ignorant or not that they are unaware of the power of God. They have experienced the power of God and seen the power of God and seen what God can do. And, and, and with all of that knowledge and understanding, within them, they begin to face the Amorites and the Hittites and the Canaanites and the Amalekites and, and all of these people they begin to face. Now, they rebel and got in a point because of fear come upon them rather than trusting God and say, I know a God that delivers us out of Egypt. I saw God power. I have witnessed God anointing. I have witnessed what God can do. And rather than trusting God, they begin to get afraid, and then the first thing they begin to say, let's find somebody to take us back to Egypt. Take you back for what? Take you back to the very thing that he delivered you out of. You weren't happy when you were there. You were complaining about Pharaoh. You were complaining about the hard taskmaster. You was complaining when you were there. Now why are you asking to go back? Don't that sound like us today? Many times when we get in trouble, the first thing we think about is going back. God done deliver you out the devil's hand and cast demons out of you, done heal your body, amen, and cast the devil out of your mind. And now you face a little trouble talking about, well, I'm going to go back and join back up. and I'm going to go back and remarry the devil again. It took, it took you 20 years to get a divorce from the devil. Now you want to go back and get with him. Why? Because you're facing a difficult time. Because you are facing something that you can't handle. Rather than you handling it, don't worry about you handling it. Trust God to handle it for you. But this is what God is saying. I want you to trust me. I want you to look at me and see me. I want you to trust me. Romans, amen. Romans, amen. The fourth chapter said, what God had promised, he's able to perform it. I want you to look back over your life and see what God has done for you in the past time. See where he brought you from. I want you to look back over your life. And then I want you to tell your situation. I want you to tell your circumstances. God did it before. God brought me this far. God made ways before. And there's nothing that I'm facing right now that he cannot do. The Bible said what God had promised, he's able to perform it. And I'm going to wait and I'm going to see God work a miracle, he's going to perform it for me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 
The Bible said that God said to Abram, before his name was changed to Abraham, God said to Abram, if he will separate himself, what do you mean separate yourself, Abraham? He was, if you will give up what you are holding on to, if you will give up what you are holding on to, then God, this is a what? What kind of promise is this? If you, I will. What kind of promise is that? That's a condition, I promise. Thank you, Sister Miller. That's a condition. God said to Abraham, if you will separate yourself, I will give you land. I will make you great. I will bless you, and I'm paraphrasing it right now. I will bless you, and I will call you. Not only will I bless you, this is a blessing. Not only will I bless you, but I will call you to be able to bless others that come around you. You know it's a good thing that you can be around folks just because you're around other folks. You, they, they, you get blessed for being around blessed folks. And that's the truth there. You can be around negative folks, and you can be around people that are depressing, and it'll rub off on you. But if you would be around, God told Abram, Abram said, I'm going to fix you. I'm going to fix you in a way that people that are close to you, people that are around you, people that is connected with you, they're going to be blessed just because you are blessed. Now, I know that worked, too, because there's a lot of folks in jail just because they were around folks going to jail. They ain't did nothing. Y'all know, I ain't talking about you, I'm talking about those folks y'all know, okay? <laughs> there's a lot of innocent folks in jail today, and they haven't did anything. They were just good people around other folks that was headed to jail, and you were just hanging with them, and when time come for their arrest, they got you, too. Amen? And they were right when they told you, I didn't do nothing. They were right. They weren't lying. They were right. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. The problem was because the other person was headed to jail, they was around them, involved around them, too close to them, and they got caught up. But you know, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn this around. You cannot be the very target person, but you can be around blessed folks. You can be around godly folks. You can stay close to those that are anointed. You can stay close to those that love the God. And then when they get blessed, that blessing rub off on you, and you can become blessed just because you're around blessed folks. And this is what God told Abraham. He said, I'm going to bless those, amen, that bless you. I'm going to bless those that are close to you. I'm going to bless those that are connected with you. Oh, somebody ought to say amen on that one. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't it be good if other folk could be blessed just because of you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But you got to give up something. Amen. You got to give up that that you holding on to and say, Lord, here I am. Use me the way you want to use me. Here I am. I surrender to you. And then let God do his thing. Tell the Lord, thank you. thank you. Tell him, thank you. Thank you. Oh, glory. God said, I'll do it for you. Amen. We serve that type of God that he'll do it for you. The devil does not want you to have what God promised you. We need to quit getting mad at God and quit blaming God. Amen. Because the enemy is busy and he, and, and, and he is the power of this era, the world, you know, all this stuff. But quit blaming God, amen, because he don't want you to have the very thing that God has promised you. And then he put us into a mold. This is two mold. I really wish you would really concentrate on that and think about it. He put you into a complaining mold. That's what the, Israel, that's what the Israelites thought doing. What verse is that? Y'all help me out. I read them on the What verse is that? And the, number two. And, the, and all the children of Israel, they murmur it. Uh, is that right? That verse 2, that 14th chapter. You can look at the chapter 14 of Numbers. Verse 2. Now, now, when you start murmuring, now I know that uh, you get a lot of that. People, they murmur it against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would that God had, uh, we had would that God, that we had died in the land of Egypt. 
Well, now they're talking about dying in the land of Egypt. When you were there, you didn't want to die. You wanted to be afraid and God deliver you out. Okay, so, so, so complaining and murmuring will hinder your promise. It will hinder your success. Say that again, okay? Complaining and murmuring will hinder your success. Be careful what you say. Be careful who you start talking about. So, so many times you be in the church and, and you're good people. It's nothing, you're not good people, but you, you start complaining and start murmuring and, 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 and complaining and, 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 and all of that will hinder because words has power. Before you do it, amen, you start speaking it, then you start thinking about it, you start saying it, you start getting in your spirit, and then you react on it. Stop mummering. And then those that are mummering and complaining, you need to distance yourself sometimes. So that won't rub off on you. Amen. It will hinder your promise. And you've still been waiting all this time. I'm trying to figure out why God not, not move for me. Why this heaven happen for me? Why this he? I've been waiting. I know God said it. I know God. I've been with God a long time. Yes, God did say it. And God is not a God that lie. I know that God said it. And you got it right. You read over like God said it. But your mothering and your complaining has hindered and held up the promise. I'm not trying to make you happy today. I'm just trying to make you, I'm just trying to make it work for you. Because if God said it, it will come to pass. Hallelujah. And it may be held up because of our complaining and our murmuring. And then you know what? It still, it still does not stop. Listen to this. It still does not stop God's plan. He might hold it up. You got to follow me on this. He might hold it up until you die off in the wilderness and give it to your next generation. Are you with me? Are you with me? If God said I'm going to do it, he's going to do it. But it may not come in your time because you are being rebellious and you are mothering and you are complaining and you won't let him just come in and do it. So God said, I'm just going to hold it here. And then when you move on, this, I'm going to give it to your, your sons or your daughters. God promised Israel that he's going to bring them out of Egypt. He told Abraham that they're going to go down from, uh, in Egypt for 400 years. And then he said, I'm going to deliver them out. Didn't he say that? Yeah. You, know, you, know, you, you read your Bible. You know that he said, I'm going to bring you out. And he did bring them out. And he brought them out. And he said, we got a land. I'm going to give them the land, to the land. But because of their attitude, because of their, compl their, their complaining and because of their murmuring and because of their disobedience, all of them died out in the wilderness except who? Who was it? Joshua and Caleb? Uh, all right, thank you, thank you. A couple of them, all of them died out and he gave the land to who? Their children and grandchildren. So something that God had promised you, you might not see it, but your children and grandchildren might see it. So God not reneging on his promises. So we're not going to say you, you, can't, you can't stop what God say he's going to do for you. He just hold it up and kind of move you out the way. And then he's still going to go ahead and get it. You know what? I want you to get a lot of hand praise. Say, but Lord, say, this is a person, this person to you. Say, Lord, I'm going to live so I can get it in my time. Come on. Come on, tell him, say, I'm going to obey you. So I'm going to obey you so I can get it in my time. I'm going to walk so I can receive it in my time. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And 
and then again, and then again, sometimes we, uh, we want to give up because we are facing some storms and facing some difficult times. But you know what? I think, I think we ought to praise God for the storm. I, I think we ought to praise God. Let me, let me, let me stay in the, in the wilderness for a minute. I think we ought to praise God for when we prayed and God had to uh, uh, tell uh, Moses to speak to the rock and get water. I think we ought to praise God when he, he, he was, uh, uh, sent the quails and the, and the manna, you know what I mean? And, and we saw all these miracles of God when we couldn't fix it ourselves. I, I think we ought to praise God for the storm that we encounter because what it do, it put us into a frame of mind to help us to begin to trust God. To help us trust God. Because if we just did everything on our own, we're not trusting God. We're trusting ourselves. So the reason I'm saying this, sometimes when we're going through the difficult time, rather than going back to Egypt and going back to where God done brought us from, we need to embrace it because it's getting us in a position to receive what he got for us in the first place. Because if we don't go through nothing, we won't know how to handle it when we get it. God got some stuff that's too big for you to handle yourself. He needs to prepare you to be able to know how to handle it when he gives it to you. When he releases it to you, you need to know how to appreciate it and how to handle it so the storm gets you ready, amen, to receive what he has for you. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes, yes. Don't do, don't, don't jump so quick to want to get a, somebody to lead you back to where you come out of. Because he wants you to trust him. Yeah. Say, trust him. Yeah. Come on, tell him, say, Lord, I trust you. Yeah. He wants you to trust him in whatever, whatever circumstances that you are facing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I, I believe the writer Matthew, the writer in, in Matthew, the sixth chapter, said, don't worry, and I'm paraphrasing, Matthew 6 and 31. He said, don't worry about what shall we eat or drink. And he goes on to say, I am the Lord that taketh care of those things for you. Well, that's enough right there. He said, don't you worry about it. <coughs> in, 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 in our terminology, the way the, the young people talk now, he, God will say, don't worry about what you're going to eat and drink. Don't worry about all that stuff because I got your back. I got your back. In other words, he said, I got all of you. Yeah. Not just your back. I got you. I got this. I think that's what he said. I got this, right? That's what they said now. I got this. I got this, yeah. God said, I got this. I got you. So you don't have to worry, but, it, but, but, but you got to trust me. You got to trust me in, in, in the midnight. You got to trust me in the midst of the storm. You got to trust me when the enemy is facing you. You got to trust me. Oh, when you're facing, when you're facing the giant. What do you mean the giant? That that is too big for you in your life. When you're facing the circumstances that you can't fix yourself. Why are you waiting on the promises? Amen. The proverb said, Solomon said in uh, Proverbs 3 and 5 said, trust the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. While I'm in the midst of my waiting time, trust the Lord and don't lean to your own. Don't, don't go selecting no Captain Ella Richardson and tell him to take me back. I don't care how much experience he got. I don't care how trained he is. Don't select nobody to take you back where God done brought you from. Because if it wasn't good for you, he wouldn't have brought you out of it. Don't let nobody tell you to go back to where you come out of. God brought you out, and if he brought you out, he able to sustain you. If he brought you out, he able to keep you, and if he brought you out, he able to take you, amen, to your destination. Oh, thank you. 
believe they said, yeah, but we look like grasshoppers. <laughs> Y'all remember that, 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 that when they faced the enemy? Yeah. Yeah, I did a little, 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 spend a little time with that. I won't spend a lot of time on it today, but they said, we look like grasshopper in the eyes of our enemy. Yeah. When they faced the enemy, the, the, those great giants that the children of Israel faced, and they said, we look like grasshopper. But now watch this. They said, we look like grasshopper. If you really read the scripture, I don't know if I'm just calling it out just word for word the way it is, but, um, but they saying that in our own eyes, in our eyes, we look like grasshoppers. Yeah. Now, I thought about that. In the intimate eyes, when they when the enemy looked at them, the enemy could have saw they look like giants to me. You see what I'm trying to say? Uh, uh, I'm looking at Ella Richard. Do me a favor, would you? Just stand up. Now, me and Ella Richard are getting ready to go at it. You know, like Mike Tyson and what's the name, Holyfield or something. Like that. Me and Ella, look, look, I got my stuff. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Now, I'm getting a little afraid now because he's bigger than I am. Now, watch this. I'm getting a little afraid because in my eyes, I didn't say his eyes. Just hold on there. Get your stand. Keep your stand. In my eyes, I'm afraid because why? He bigger and I look like, he look like a giant in my eyes. But watch this, watch this. In Ella Richardson's eyes, he look at me, he might see me as the giant. See, he looking at me, I don't know, but he really might be afraid because God done elevated me in his eyes and I might be bigger than him in his eyes. But the children of Israel said, in my eyes, we look like grasshoppers. But it never said that Ella Richardson see me like grasshopper. It didn't say how he see me. He said how I see me. But it really doesn't matter. See, we got to be able to build up ourselves in the Lord. We ought to build up ourselves and say, greater. In the place of looking like a grasshopper, all of a sudden, greater is he that in me. Greater than he that is in me. Than in Ella Richardson. Greater than he that is in me. That in the world. We ought to quit acting like grasshopper. And thought acting like God hopper. I'm not a grasshopper, but I'm a God hopper. Because greater than he that was in me than he that is in the world. Oh, Lord. Thank you. Woo! Quit looking at the size of your circumstances. Quit looking at the size of your enemy. And start looking at the size of God. Because God is a great big God. God is everywhere. There he is. I'm closing here. But, but, but I got to tell you this. How big is God? I said, quit looking at the size of your enemy. Quit looking at the size of your circumstance. But how big is God? What size is God? In the book of Acts, in the 17th chapter, in the 27th verse, that he's all present and he's everywhere. In the book of 1 John, the third chapter, in the 20th verse, say he knows all things. In the book of Genesis, the 17th chapter, verse 1, he's almighty. God, he's a mighty God. And then it said, trust him. He can do anything. Say yes. 
Say yes! Say yes! Hey! David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Oh, glory! I'm getting ready to go into battle. I can't do it on my own. But God will take care of me. God lead me in the paths of righteousness. For your name's sake. If I fall, God will lift me up. Yeah! Because he's my shepherd. I'm so glad. Tell somebody, I'm so glad that the Lord is my shepherd. And I'm just a sheep. Fall about a shepherd. Say yeah! close by saying this let's not fret let's not give up let's not go back into where God had brought us out of when we face the opposition or we face difficult times because we all going to face some of those let's not result in going back that never helps us when we go back into where he brought us out of but look, I just want to share this with you. Um, David said, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil because the Lord is with me. Now, that's what got him over. You know, if you study the life of David, you know David went through a lot of difficult times, a lot of things. Amen. And then Abra, as God changed him later on to Abraham, Abra, uh, left and went down to Egypt when a famine came. And uh, we don't know why, but he was leading by the, by the leading of God. So I, I said this to tell you, just stay with him and follow his direction. And God led him down into Egypt, you know. And uh, in, the, in the 12th chapter of Genesis, there was a famine and Abel went down into Egypt. In the 13th chapter, the next chapter, God had him to leave Egypt. He came out of Egypt. Now, he didn't just leave, but when he came out, the Bible says he came out very rich. So he went down. Let me just kind of put it in maybe in our terminology. This, this, the Bible says it say he maybe he went down in debt or he went down not being rich. But when he came out, the Bible said he was very rich. So sometimes stay in the course in the midst of the storm and stay in there. At the end, you're going to come out better than you were before you went in. Are you with me? So you have to stay the course, amen. After the waiting, after the storm, amen, after all of the going through, the battle, the difficult time, you come you comes out you comes out better than you did before you went in and and that's the joy part of it so god know what he's doing may the lord bless you would you stand for just a minute stand for just a minute thank you jesus i'm praying that god will continue to bless us bless your families your homes Man, your loved ones, 
husbands and wives and sons and daughters, those that are afflicted in their body, that they'll be healed, delivered. My prayer is that even though that we are going through some difficult times in our lives, that God will sustain us and keep us, watch over us, protect us. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father, right now. Thank you, Lord. Every soul that is standing here today. Yes. That you will bless them in a very special way. The enemy have no authority on their life. And we claim the victory right now. The victory in the name of Jesus. We don't just come to church out of routine, ritual. But we come. We come to give you praise. We come to rejoice for deliverance. And we come to rejoice for Victoria life. We come for your saving power, yes, your Lord. grace, and your mercy. And we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We say thank you. Thank you. There's so many that are walking you, in Jesus. difficult time right now. The last couple of years, we've been through some very difficult times. But I thank you, and I'm going to thank you right now. I thank you for healing. I thank you for many have been sick, and God, you restored. I thank you for your healing power. In the name of Jesus. Lord, save the unsaved. If there's a one in your family, a name that you want to call, just speak the name. The Lord save. Save them right now. Thank the name Lord. that are calling by each person. Save that son. Save that daughter. Save it, your grandchildren. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Fill them. Save them, Lord Jesus. That sister, that mother, and that father. Save our loved one. We speak it right now in Jesus' yes, name. And we thank you. Thank you Lord. And the people say amen. Oh, another you, chance to say yes. Oh, 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 thank you for another chance to say yes. Oh, thank you for another chance to say yes. so much. We're so grateful again for his blessing and thank each of you for, amen, being here today. Hallelujah. Amen. Let people know, let the other members know that we are open for church. Yes, sir. Amen. They don't have to stay home anymore. We are open. Amen. And we don't have to just stay on Zoom all the time. 